Greetings programs. My name is Rich and I'd like to welcome you to a very special Let's Play. Um, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite horror games. Now this was actually made as you can see by Bethesda Softworks in 2006 for the Xbox and is kind of infamous and it wasn't very successful but it kind of set the table for a lot of the horror games that you see nowadays. So this is Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth and if you've never heard that or heard of this game before it's probably with good reason because they used to keep this under the shelves uh, underneath the counter when you try and ask for it at video game stores and Hastings and stuff like that the following game contains scenes of a disturbing nature to maximize your Cthulhu experience please ensure that you use the options menu to adjust your brightness setting Cthulhu will occasionally manipulate graphics sound and controls in an unusual way so, yeah, this is no joke, guys. Horror, the true horror that paralyzes the mind and sears it with nightmares, is never truly healed. H.P. Lovecraft. Forget Jaws, this is what'll make you uh, be scared to go back into the water. Now, I played this game the year that it came out in 2006, and a lot of my friends played it because I loaded it out to them, or they bought copies of their own. Now, it's been a long time. I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember a whole lot of it. I remember some of the big pieces, but a lot of the little details I don't. So I'm looking forward to kind of... Thank you, Cthulhu. I'm looking forward to rediscovering the game. And I'm playing it properly here in a darkened room. I only have a lamp right behind my computer monitor. So let's go into options here real quick. And I'm going to mess with some stuff just to make it a little bit easier. And we're going to move this down. Is E used for anything? Oh, lean right. Okay, well, I guess I can do that. However, I do know I want my mouse sensitivity at 1. Good. And you can hear the game talking to you. And we'll do a new game. And we have Boy Scout and Private Investigator as our difficulty modes. We can't do Hardened Detective or Mythos Specialist yet, so we'll have to do a PI. Dreams of the Future. Now, a lot of these loading screens are going to be really, really fast because this was made to run off an Xbox. Arkham Asylum, 16th of February, 1922. Now, at my end, I can fully see. My last case opened me a new fear. A real fear. A fear of myself, what I am, and of what I've always been. All that I was is now lost. Hope purpose, pleasure, all meaningless. I now walk in the shadows between worlds, and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth. Lovecraft ruined 1920s music for me. Or made it better, I'm not exactly sure which. Get the key, man. Now, Arkham Asylum originally came from Lovecraft, not Batman. And we can pretty much be assured that if there's any place that's called Arkham, it's generally probably an unpleasant place. Prologue. 
We'll go ahead and do the prologue for the first episode, and I think that'll be a good way to start. Depending on how long it runs. I want these episodes to last anywhere from around 20 to 30 minutes, so anytime we'll find a good stopping point, we'll go from there. Game tips are currently active. If you don't want to see any game tips, they can be turned off from the game options. You can press the escape key at any time during gameplay to access the menu options. Groovy. Six and a half years ago. JPW. And I love the cinema. Has those little tears. Uh, Massachusetts, 6th of September, 1915. Has those tears like an old movie film. You can even see drops of water on the screen. Good. What's the beep? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any. Victor? He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. They've got the locals scared. So tonight... We were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds, when we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Hang on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Who have we got out here? Eh, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. Lead the way, Robert. I better check out this crazy gang of yours. This is back when, apparently, cults were a regular thing. Now we move around and you can see that this is a very pretty game for an Xbox game. This is available on Steam right now for download, by the way. Now we use S to talk. How you doing, kid? Good, sir. Is it true what they say about you? Depends on what they're saying. <laughs> that you've cracked cases where there was no evidence. <laughs> you shouldn't believe everything you hear. Uh, right. Guess we work our way up here. Jack, Officer Nichols will brief you at the top. Be careful. We'll definitely be careful. We are in a Lovecraft game. Something must be wrong. I think I saw him with Officer Armstrong. Just take it easy. Oh, you see him? You see that guy right there at the corner of the house? Evening, Jack. Glad you could join the freak show. How's it looking, Henry? I don't like this one bit, Jack. Check the alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. They're a bit twitchy. Try to take Oh! Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, yeah, things go horribly wrong. Okay, let's get out of the line of fire here. No cultist. So we go through here. And I don't know if that... Okay, we don't close the door. The door closes by itself. Okay. Hello, rats. So a huge firefight going on outside. Nothing over here that I can see. It's an old stove. And we can use S to observe our surroundings. It's too dark to be sure, but that rotting smell tells me these shelves are used for storing food. Okay. We'll go ahead and close this. Ooh. Like I said, I don't remember a whole lot of this. I do remember these paintings, though, because I wanted them. It looks like an eye, but the rest of the painting has no real shape. This blasphemous image makes me feel uneasy. Now, one thing you have to remember about this game, it has an insanity meter. If you start think if you see things start to like swerve back and forth, 
that means your insanity your sanity's dropping. And if it drops too low, you kill yourself. It's game over. So we have to be aware of that. Ooh. As I continue to translate the narcotic fragments, I become more and more eager to contact my Yithian masters. These beings truly are gods to us. Their intellect and knowledge surpasses ours in ways impossible to comprehend. I know now just how insignificant mankind is in the universe, a doomed and simple species thrown up as a side effect of an experiment by the Elder Things. It is a blessing that such flawed creatures as ourselves have such a short and limited future. Now, okay. You've picked up your first journal item. Select the book icon in the interface to study your journal. It may reveal vital clues. When the book icon is grayed out, there are no new entries to read. Now, if you know anything about Lovecraft, that may have actually made sense to you. But if it doesn't, if none of this makes sense, just strap yourselves in. You're in for a treat. Alright, I don't think there's anything else in here. Yeah, okay, that's where we came in. Running low on ammo. Okay. It's locked. The okay, door's locked. More eyes. That's simple strange. Looks almost like a flaming eye. I should take a closer look. Oh, I love grandfather clocks. Oh, that's a Yithian. A depiction of some alien creature. The great race of Yith. Now these are our save spots. Elder signs. Now you can see I played the, up to his point just to make sure that everything was working. And we'll go through this again. Oh! Watch him on the stairs. It's locked. I guess... Okay, they got that boarded up. Let's go ahead and head upstairs. This is new territory for me. What is that sound? Do you guys hear that? That gurgling? It won't open. It won't budge. Okay, that's probably for the best. Oh. Hi. At last. <gasps> they seem to recognize me. I don't get it. Empty ammo boxes and spent shells. Now I want you to notice that we have no weapon, and we bet we better get used to that for a good long while. Oh. Poisoning by the looks of it. Looks like the entire cult. Oh, see, now you see things going blurry. That means the sanity's dropping. So. Nothing of interest. Let's go ahead and get out of here because I'm not seeing anything that we can pick up. And let's go ahead and. I, I don't know how to. S okay, it went to a cinema. Don't shoot. I'm unarmed. Ah. We've been expecting you, Mr. Walt. Oh! I wonder if that was Victor... person we needed. Damn. He recognized me. And it sounded like he was going to get on the level of what's going on in this joint. Not now. See, you can even see the blood starting to spread. He's dead. Looks like a bad case of lead poisoning. You're funny, Jack. The key. This should help down. He's dead. Looks oh. like a bad. Okay, I thought I got shot. Okay, you picked up an inventory item. Open the interface to view this item in its description. Highlight the item and click on it to use it with a character, an object, or even by itself. Case of lead poisoning. Okay. Now, if I go into my inventory, 
you can see Jack here. You can see his basically his life gauge, how well he's doing, and everything else that we can gather. So, so let's go ahead and head downstairs. And we've got two places that we can open. It's locked. Hmm. Maybe this one. It's unlocked. Okay. Cool. Oh. Oh, I got goosebumps. This is all me. All pictures of Jack. I don't understand. I mean, all of these photos. All of them. There must be some kind of mistake. Why would they want me here? Uh, it must be an old case. Something I've forgotten. I'm a screwball with a grudge, maybe. Okay. Think. Easy. I gotta think. Easy, Jack. Easy, Wusa. Okay, there's a key. Another key. This should fit the door across the hall. Here's newspaper clips. Leave home, arrive at station, leave station, lunch, bank, bank to station, follow suspect. Imagine if you found out that you were being staked out by an entire cult. Alright, let's close this. Calm down, Jack. I can hear his heart beating. I don't know if you guys can. It's unlocked. Okay, we're in a library. I hear screaming. Okay, it's C to crouch. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Can we look at it? Boston Globe, Podium Sermon. Enlightened or duped inside Boston's strangest church. Those of our readers who live near its headquarters and an ordinary looking Boston residence will need no introduction to the Fellowship of Yith, or whatever the cult's name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi-religious group before, a few words of explanation are unnecessary. Since our country's founded upon the basis of religious freedom, it sure has been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small wonder, no small number, are headquartered in the states of New England, where the pilgrims themselves sought a new world free of religious persecution. But the question must be asked, at what point does a religion become a cult, and its trusting adherents, not to mention its blameless neighbors, become victims? That is the question this journal poses in regard to the Fellowship of Yith. In a month-long investigation, our intrepid reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind this so-called church. Its origins are somewhat mysterious, the more so since the group's leaders declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the Fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt, based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. Holt has not been seen for almost six years. His followers apparently believe he is commuting with the mysterious powers behind his faith, and that he is shortly to return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group, a little different from many others. However, those who make their homes near the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on street corners, casting menacing glances at their innocuous neighbors, and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime, which the local police seem powerless to prevent or redress. Strange lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change color unpredictably and cast weird, unintelligible sounds. God, those, mute, those sounds are creepy. Shadows. Even more disturbing are the noises which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building and in the game. They include chanting, unearthly music, and worst of all, screams like those of lost souls in agony. Many of the sect's neighbors are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocities. Those few who dared complain to the police were told that because the house is private property, and because there's no concrete evidence of any wrongdoing, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the horrors of Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of Yith engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they cause to the local community? 
A source within the police department, speaking on the condition of anonymity, tell the Globe that the Fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes, but so far, the lack of evidence and the reluctance of nervous witnesses to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Very well, we say, where the police cannot or will not investigate, the Globe shall continue to act in the interest of Boston citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about this so-called church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months, so that all may know the truth. Editor's note, it was great sorrow, sorrow that the Globe announces the death of reporter Howard Adelstone, who was leading the paper's investigation into the Fellowship of Yig when he apparently drowned in Boston Harbor. The coroner has ruled his death a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. Wow. Well, let's get back here, and maybe... Whoa! Oh, it's a mirror. There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. Okay. Hey, Jack. Looking good. Whoa! Oh! Okay. I, I, I remember this. Shit. That did not sound good. No, it does not sound good, Jack. Ooh. Well, that's just swell. Yeah. Okay. He's dead. The beam must have fallen and crushed his skull. Probably a good thing to... Hello there, Iron Door. Ah. Uh, human anatomy. Dead bodies, and plenty of them. Something dreadful has been going on down here. From the markings, he must have been one of their own. I wonder if he volunteered. Yeah. Jack's breathing pretty heavy. Oh. Hi. Now check this out. This guy's alive. Good God. What the hell is all this? I, I've never seen such equipment before. Who could have made such a machine? But I'll tell you this. If we look around, I remember this part. His beating heart. The contraption above seems to be controlling his breathing. All of his organs are spread out around this room and still working. Looks like his stomach. Looks like his brain. I wonder what those wires are for. This pipe must drain the waste from his intestines. What are they feeding him, though? Looks like his kidneys. They're moving around in all that liquid. And we got this green crystal here. Too hot to pick oh. up. Okay. Um. I think actually. Okay, we use this control panel. Whoa! I'm not touching it again. Okay, we're going. In, we're starting to kind of go insane a little bit. Easy there. Okay, so we killed him. The machine must have overloaded. That, He's dead. That's probably for the best. Can we grab this crystal now? The crystal's still warm. Okay. I believe we're in here now. This tunnel feels like it's gonna collapse at any moment. As long as it doesn't collapse on me. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure this is in the basement of every cult. I bet it, it comes, you know, with the paperwork and whatnot. Now, if you look around here. Odd. It looks like it's full of mercury. That is a lot of mercury. Odd. It looks like it's full of mercury. Can we look around here a little bit more? And... What the hell is that? Looks like the Stargate. All right, so we go into our inventory. Put the crystal in here, because this was shut down. I do remember this. This 
is what you get for snooping around, Jack. Chevron 1 is locked. Chevron 2 is locked. Hi. How are you? I see you brought friends. Ooh. And that's the prologue, guys. I'll go ahead and end it here. If you like the video, uh, click like down below, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. That'll be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.